Moving to our ne next session, we would like to welcome Mr. Varun Saxena, Head of Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning, Anarok Property Consultants. The topic for the session is increasing revenues using artificial intelligence. So Varun heads the AIML practice, one of the key initiatives of Anarok, excited on working on new projects and challenges. He has over two decades of power packed experience across real estate, financial services, retailing and industrial sectors with deep exposure across various business functions such as marketing, AI, sales, product management, data analytics, strategy, and program management. Over to you, Varun. Please start your session. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Nikhil. Uh, I hope I'm audible. You are clear, clear and loud, loud and clear. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, thank you uh, to the uh, Creda Youth Wing for inviting me. Uh, for this marathon session, uh, Abhishek has been kind enough to uh, kind of invite me uh, for me to share what we are doing uh, and how we are using artificial intelligence to share, uh, to increase our uh, uh, revenues. Uh, I'll just share my screen quickly. Um, uh, so um, uh, uh, so uh, before I kind of jump into what exactly we are doing, uh, I'll just uh, share a couple of slides on the uh, problem statement we are uh, trying to solve and then I'll move into uh, the three, four areas we are uh, working using artificial intelligence and how all of us could possibly uh, uh, do the same. Uh, it's uh, uh, So um, artificial intelligence, of course, all of us would have heard over the last couple of years has kind of uh, been the word everyone talks about uh, 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 all of us would have heard of chat gpt which has come a few weeks ago and uh, even people who didn't know artificial intelligence have started figuring out what it is uh, artificial intelligence as a concept is uh, pretty old it's uh, robotics which came in 1950s uh, was the starting point if i may uh, it's just that now uh, the quantum of data which uh, gets generated uh, and the cost of computing, which has gone down tremendously as compared to, say, 30, 20, 10, 5 years ago. Uh, these two factors, the amount of data generation and the cost of computing going down, has led to a, a big time jump in the usage of artificial intelligence uh, to help businesses in various fields. Of course, I will focus on um, uh, how we could increase revenues uh, in real estate using artificial intelligence. Uh, to start with the problem statement I'm actually trying to solve uh, is uh, 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 for a background. Uh, typically, uh, I am sharing the All India Home Buying Universe right now. We, uh, across the top 12, 13 cities, we typically have about 4 crore leads generated on an All India basis. 25% uh, uh, of these leads are interested leads, get qualified, uh, which is about a crore. Uh, 30 lakh of these are unique. So uh, obviously a, a customer or a lead can be interested and gives leads in multiple projects. Uh, from these uh, uh, qualified leads, we have about a 30% site visit uh, ratio. Of course, project to project, it can vary, uh, but this typically is what we've seen across on, as an average across the country uh, at Anarok. Uh, uh, so about 30 lakh uh, site visits and 11 lakh unique uh, site visits. So we had about uh, 19 lakh people who were serious buyers did not do site visits. Uh, and uh, then from the site visits which happened, typically 10% bookings end up happening. Again, an average uh, across the country, some uh, projects might be higher, some projects might be lower. So we uh, typically have about 3 lakhs home, home sold, a new home sold. Uh, and uh, so um, there are 19 lakh people who were serious buyers did not do site visits. There are about... 8 lakh people, unique people who did site visits but did not end up buying. So from these 27 lakh interested people who've postponed their purchase for various reasons, uh, 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 we are trying to identify if we could convert some of them uh, faster, quicker. And that's where uh, the intention of using our uh, the artificial intelligence uh, is where we are focused on. Uh, so we are uh, how we are doing this is actually through four. Uh, we are trying to solve four problem statements at each stage. One uh, uh, basic uh, at the lead generation stage itself is the marketing team able to identify right set of inquiries from the uh, uh, set of customers or the uh, potential customers. 
uh, is the pre-sales team able to detect the serious interested buyers uh, uh, which have been uh, from the leads which have been generated uh, then comes is the sourcing team able to um, get the interested buyers to the site right of uh, doing a site visit and lastly um, is the closing sales team able to convince the walk-ins to buy uh, our project uh, so there is a natural process which goes through uh, we are trying to use uh, artificial intelligence to kind of uh, help uh, increase uh, the outcome uh, uh, the the benefits we see uh, typically is uh, uh, the first part is that we actually use the behavioral pattern of the successful customers people who actually end up buying uh, 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 is what we uh, use uh, we identify high intent leads at the uh, lead generation stage itself uh, additional uh, we we are able to help uh, generate additional sales from dead leads uh sorry am i not yeah uh this obviously leads to lower cost of booking lower marketing cost and uh, uh finally lower finance cost because the inventory gets sold faster uh now i'll quickly move to how at anarok we are embracing artificial intelligence machine learning to increase revenues uh, uh and uh, there are four parts which i will just quickly uh, run a, one or two slides for each of them uh, one after the other uh the first uh, uh part or uh, where we use artificial intelligence machine learning is for prospect quality scoring where we are identifying high intent leads at the uh, uh lead generation stage itself so the moment the lead is generated where possibly we would uh, possibly just have the name number email id typically uh, in most cases we are able to identify whether the customer has a high chance of purchasing the uh, property um uh, so uh, uh this uh, uh, how is this built uh, because that is the first question uh, that uh, which which typically uh, comes in our mind is that lead has just been generated how can you predict a uh, customer will buy the property or not so this is built on a dynamic combination of uh, data which is uh, data related to the customer like i said name number email id uh, possibly uh the uh, details of the project where he has inquired and the source through which the lead has come in and i'll just spend a minute here more because uh, that will explain the concept on how uh, uh, this is used uh, for example uh, if i take customer uh, among the three uh, i would have the uh, uh, name number email id typically from the first first five digits of the number i am able to identify the uh, uh, mobile operator i am able to identify uh, uh, for example the mobile circle over a large data set there are patterns when you build models which come out uh, uh, across each of these uh, so so mobile operator uh, uh, vodafone idea uh, customer would be different from a reliance jio customer uh, uh, from possibly a airtel customer uh, over uh, from a bsnl customer i am just taking examples and which intuitively we would know but then there would be pockets and projects where uh, uh, some mobile operator uh, uh, customers having or leads having uh, numbers of some mobile operators would tend to convert more uh, or less okay uh, email domain okay uh, gmail uh, hotmail yahoo etc is what uh, is again uh, an input parameter as we use the word a uh, project so uh, which project is it which micro market it is uh, what is the configuration available what are the price points uh, uh, price uh, or uh, for the uh, configurations what are the amenities in the project all these are kind of input parameters when we uh, build these models uh, coming to source it would be uh, what is the source of the lead is it a digital lead Uh, is it a google lead is it a, a google uh, furthermore is it a google search ad or a google display ad as an example uh, is it a digital lead is it a portal lead is it a 99 acres housing magic bricks common floor just as an example is it a, a print ad which newspaper and so on so forth so um, that's how those tend to be the input parameters on which the models then uh, uh, dynamically uh, depending on the project uh share the um, score for uh, using artificial intelligence machine learning they uh, share a score 
uh, th so uh, the last point here is that uh, it's it's uh, a combination of all three. So if I am a, a high intent lead in one project, I need not be a high intent lead in another project. So it's not a HNI lead is a HNI lead everywhere like it is in other industries. Uh, here it is a combination of uh, a customer project and the source. Um, moving on, uh, so this of course we built this on uh, 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 behavioral data, which at Anarok we had for four million plus leads uh, uh, across the country. Um, uh, so high intent leads, like I mentioned, we classified internally as platinum leads uh, to ensure more focus. So the uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, the thought is very clear. Uh, all leads have to be attended to. Platinum leads need to be attended to with more focus. Uh, uh, th these are executed real time. So the moment the lead is generated and it hits the CRM, uh, uh, if it's a platinum lead, it's kind of tagged as platinum. Uh, typically, 10 to 12 percent leads are uh, tagged as platinum and they end up giving about 35 to 40 percent of the overall bookings. So this is one of the use cases we have uh, implemented. Uh, and uh, uh, moving on, the second one is where we are uh, typically working on the uh, uh, dead leads, uh, where we are working on the junk and failed leads. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, just one more uh, few points more on the same earlier use case. So how we use the uh, prospect quality scoring is that uh, uh, we give more focus in the pre-sale sales team. We uh, uh, give the leads to better uh, callers. We do more attempts before failing the leads and we review these leads uh, uh, closely by the leaders. There's also another side where the lead scores are lower. Uh, we uh, typically, rather than putting a warm body to attempt, we start off using WhatsApp, SMS, emails warm up the lead and then reach out because the output is lower. And for the lowest set of leads, we actually, uh, uh, since we are able to track the source where leads are not converting or moving ahead, we are able to reduce those sources here, uh, thereby also saving marketing costs. Uh, moving to the next part, which is uh, generating revenues from the dead leads. Uh, so again, I would, uh, we, we saw the all India picture uh, in my uh, problem statement, but this is slightly an anarok uh, uh, numbers which uh, I'm kind of putting here. Um, uh, so we, we have about uh, close to 4 million leads in our system. Uh, typically at the lead stage, 75% get failed. 25% uh, uh, move ahead. Uh, and then further uh, from the interested stage, qualified stage to site visit, there's a 30% site visit, 70% get failed. And uh, site visit to booking is a 10 to 15% conversion. So uh, 85% get failed. So typically the uh, lead to booking uh, across sources tends to be close to 1%, 99% leads tend to fail at various stages. So what we're doing is uh, uh, using this, uh, uh, the, the date, again, the behavioral data, uh, uh, we are uh, identifying from the set of dead leads, which have got junked or failed, uh, which leads basis their behavior should have moved ahead in the sales cycle. Uh, so, uh, uh, like I gave you an example in my previous slide, uh, where we use uh, source, uh, project details, we use uh, customer details. Apart from that, as we move ahead in the sales cycle, uh, we would have details of number of calls attempted, number of successful calls, uh, the comments after which our pre-sales or sales colleagues would uh, enter after each uh, call. So, we also do a sentiment analysis to understand whether the customer is... Uh, uh, kind of uh, has a positive thought process and then the lead has got failed because the lead can get failed for either our reason or customer's reason. It could it could be a combination of both. So we are trying to identify where uh, basis the behavior of the customer, he, he had a positive behavior and then for some reason he's dropped off. And then uh, uh, the, the AIM world model try to give back a set of such leads uh, which we, retry, uh, we try to revive those leads. Uh, we have three models prepared here uh, for, uh, because the data captured is different uh, at each stage. One is leads which fail at the uh, lead stage itself, one which are interested but fail before site visit, and the last one is where site visits happen but customers do not end up booking because, again, at site visit, we capture a lot more data. So we have three 
uh, uh, different models uh, helping us uh, generate revenues from the dead leaves. Uh, we, we see uh, month on month between a four to six percent revenue lift uh, where uh, uh, within the organization where uh, dead leads which uh, are given back for revival uh, through the AIML models uh, actually convert into um, bookings. Uh, moving ahead, uh, the third uh, place where we uh, um, are embracing AIML is where, where we are trying to identify customers who give us uh, referrals. We all know that referral uh, 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 channel or custom uh, referred customers have the highest conversion rates, right? And uh, uh, the lowest cost of acquisition. Um, now, what we are trying to do is uh, using data or again using the behavior of customers who actually give us referrals. Uh, uh, we are now uh, uh, typically referrals as a category is asked more from customers who end up booking homes or possibly who uh, do a site visit, right? When they are face to face uh, uh, doing a site visit or end up booking. Uh, and many a times we do have schemes uh, uh, for our customers who booked homes and they get uh, uh, offers if someone whom they refer buy homes. What we are trying to do is uh, um, uh, identify customers early in the journey who can give us referrals. Okay, so that the pool is much larger. Even if the customer for some reason does not end up buying a home, uh, in that project, at least uh, uh, we may be able to gather some referrals who may end up buying uh, 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 homes. So, so that's uh, uh, what we are doing here. So reach out and then there is a different, depending on the level of engagement, there are different set of teams who reach uh, leads which are uh, uh, at the interested stage, at the site visit stage or at the booking stage. So this is the second, uh, the, the third use uh, uh, case where we are using artificial intelligence uh, to identify customers who give us referrals. Uh, my last slide is uh, with the pre-sales team and uh, where we are using artificial intelligence for improving the productivity because uh, at the pre-sales call center uh, level, the uh, intent is to get maximum productivity uh, from each of the callers. Uh, so uh, what we are doing, uh, a couple of things I'm mentioning uh, is that we are identifying which uh, pre-sales team member is best suited for which source. So uh, uh, every uh, pre-sales team member, uh, telecaller would have his own strengths, weaknesses. Uh, some might be good in higher tickets, some in lower tickets, some might be good in fresh leads, uh, some might be good in uh, callbacks, some might be good in a Google kind of... Uh, uh, lead, some might be good in a database calling. Uh, so uh, we are identifying which lead uh, is, uh, which pre-sales team member is uh, best suited for which source. We are identifying which team member is best suited for callbacks in a particular project. Uh, we are uh, using speech analytics to improve the quality. Uh, so uh, uh, we also do sentiment analysis uh, for the pre-sales ex executive as well as customer on the calls which includes things like uh, the uh, volume and tone of uh, the customer and the uh, uh, pre-sales executive, how different is it and things like that. And lastly, we are using, uh, 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 so, so this part uh, incidentally is uh, uh, easy to pick up because uh, uh, the, what I had uh, covered till now, because uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, your pre-sales uh, system providers uh, uh, typically have started providing speech analytics and things like that. So it's it's easy to kind of plug that in. It's not that one needs to start from scratch, unlike the other three uh, uh, use cases uh, I had mentioned earlier. The last uh, point here is nudges for sales improvement. Here, what we are doing is uh, 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 typically, uh, like in any sales process, uh, even in the pre-sales, uh, typically 20% uh, of our pre-sales team members would be out performers where they perform much better than the balance uh, mid and bottom performers. Typically 50% would tend to be mid performers, 30% would tend to be bottom performers. So we, we try and study the behavior of the uh, top performers. Uh, how do they pitch? What tone do they pitch? What points do they make? And uh, then try and nudge uh, the mid and bottom performers to improve their pitches 
so that their overall improve, uh, productivity goes up so so that in short was is what we are trying to uh, do uh, to help increase the productivity of our uh, pre sales team so so uh, these four ca use cases is what we are currently working on and implementing uh, we are of course uh, building up a few more use cases with possibly in the future uh, once it's up ready implemented i may uh, in future uh, interactions possibly share with you so so uh, that was all i had to share uh, happy to kind of uh, uh, take uh, any questions any thoughts or feedback uh, from anyone thank you so much uh, th thank you mr saxena for a very informative and uh, a very attractive session which is uh, we all are uh, eager to listen to so I have a quick question yeah, for this session. Yes, this is the national data that you have shown. So uh, how, how does it differentiate in a tier two city than uh, the capital cities of India? How, how does it differentiate in a tier two city? Because many of our members are from tier two cities who have joined the okay. session. Today. Got it. So uh, how this works is uh, I've, of course, uh, since I had 20, 25 minutes, I shared an all India picture. But on the ground, uh, there uh, uh, so there are separate models which are built uh, for each region uh, or for metros. Okay, so uh, 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 ba my base models are about 21 to cover the entire country. Okay, so that uh, all types of homes, all types of geographies, locations, micro markets across the country get covered. Uh, and that is the starting point. After uh, there are a certain set of uh, leads in a particular project, uh, we actually move uh, further to a project level output. So I will start with my base uh, models, which I have built uh, uh, on the 4 million leads, okay, which would be divided possibly into 20 further. Uh, it will not be equal because metros may have a larger set of leads. Uh, uh, tier 2 might have slightly smaller. But among the 20, so when, when, when a new project comes in, as an example, I uh, start with my standard model, for, which is best suited for that project. This is uh, the project features, which city, which uh, micro market configuration, price bracket it is. I can identify that uh, my uh, combination number 17, as an example, out of uh, 20 is what I need to start the project with. And once that particular project has sufficient leads, then it becomes a project specific output. So in that project uh, uh, itself, I can further study the behavior of leads within that project and given uh, output of the best uh, leads uh, specific behavior to that project. All right. Thank you. Thank you Varun, for sharing it. Uh, one more question, uh, Varun here. So how does a, a buyer for a commercial uh, property behave differently from a residential property because residential is particularly uh, for the family needs. So how yes. does it differentiate if we are talking about the AI usage and uh, the data that you had shared? So uh, uh, behaves quite differently. Uh, we, we all know a, a commercial buyer is different. A commercial property buyer is different from a, a family, like you mentioned, a residential buyer. Uh, the, the, uh, the best part about artificial intelligence or machine learning, as it's called, is that... Uh, the machine uh, gives us uh, the uh, features which are important for a particular model uh, and the weightages. So I will not decide uh, uh, just what I had explained, ke, uh, 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 say a, a email domain should have a 10% weightage or a Google should have a 5% weightage because then it becomes rule-based. It's not artificial intelligence machine learning. Uh, the, the machine decides that uh, your source has overall so much weightage within that uh, possibly it will say 7.5 percent i'm just taking an example and within that google would have so much channel partner would have so much print would have so much and similarly it's dynamic depending on the uh, project or micro market so it kind of the 13 14 15 parameters uh, which are taken in in the initial stages which go ahead uh, as the data gets enriched uh, the weightages uh, are decided by the model the model learns by itself, hence it's called machine learning. And so uh, when I when we work on commercial property models, the input parameters or the uh, which the model gives back are different. So there are separate models for uh, commercial property and separate for uh, residential. 
Right. So uh, one quick question from uh, one of the viewer, Mr. Naveen yes. Pandey. So he's asking, they are already using the analog sales software. Uh, yes. How to plug extra with that? And uh, um, what is the procedure to follow that? Uh, so uh, uh, we could get in touch and get that. It's it's possible easily because uh, it's integrated uh, with our CRM anyway. So uh, 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 the gentleman can kind of reach out uh, even to me, varun.saxena at anarog.com if that is fine. And uh, we could take it forward. I wouldn't know which uh, 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 organization he is. Otherwise, we, I could have reached out we, directly. We, we will inform it, uh, Varun. Perfect. perfect. Uh, Thank any you so more much. questions, Abhishek, Harshul? I've, I've got uh, one question. Yes. So, uh, Varun, the entire uh, premise of using AI ML is applicable when you have very, very large scale data. Uh, if developers still want to go ahead and uh, implement at their own scale, any such AI or uh, uh, ML, can you give some uh, ideas on how developers can just use their own database and implement some Sure, 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 Abhishek. Yeah. So uh, typically two ways, um, if I may, uh, one is that if there is a sizable data in a particular project, uh, we, uh, Malab, a model like this can be built. So it's it's not that. Uh, uh, so so uh, in fact, the newer concept is uh, uh, in um, uh, this field also is uh, uh, typically generation of a lot of synthetic data as they call it, which is data like the original data. So it's not necessary that data bahut jada hona chahiye. Ya there needs to be a huge amount of data only then this can be worked out of course uh, the the people preparing the model uh, need to understand the sales process and uh, 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 how the the output works out better so uh, first point being that uh, uh, if there is a project with a decent uh, many a times we have projects which have phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 as an example there anyways you would have older data if you are in the second phase uh, many a times you may have similar uh, micro markets, other projects, a lot of us may have such projects. So that data can be used. Of course, uh, uh, with uh, uh, the uh, in case uh, 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 it's possible, Anarok can help them because like I said, Anarok has base models ready where we start off and then gradually uh, once there is sizable data, uh, we move directly to project specific output. So you don't need to start from scratch. We have those base things ready. Uh, uh, we start from there and then gradually uh, uh, move to a spe project specific output. Uh, I hope I have answered uh, Abhishek your query. Thank you. Yes, very much. Thank you so much, Varun. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Varun, for the wonderful session.